In this practice problem, we're given a textual description of a galvanic cell and asked to write the notation for the cell along with the half reactions as well as the overall cell reaction. So we're going to be drawing on our skills in writing half reactions and balancing redox reactions to do this in addition to interpreting the text and writing some cell notation. So we've got a CR or chromium wire immersed in a CrCl3 solution. We're told that the chromium electrode is the anode. So I'm going to go, go ahead and color code as we've been doing and underline the anode components in blue. Chromium metal and CrCl3 solution are our anode components. And the cathode components then by default are copper metal, a copper wire, and one molar copper chloride solution. And let's go ahead and underline that concentration as well for the chromium three solutions, since that's going to be important in the cell notation. Okay, so we could draw a schematic of this, and I think this is actually a good practice to go through. So I'm going to do that really quickly so that we can get a visual sense of what the galvanic cell looks like. All right, so here's a little schematic of the galvanic cell we're looking at here. The anode is color-coded in blue and the cathode in red, and let's recall that the anode has chromium metal, as the reduced component and a one molar solution of chromium three chloride as the oxidized component. So chromium is undergoing oxidation to chromium three. And on the anode side, we have copper metal and we have a one molar solution of copper two chloride. And so it's evident here that copper two is undergoing reduction to copper metal. And remember, we know the anode and the cathode for the time being based on the fact that the problem told us to assume the chromium electrode is the anode. In a future video, we'll learn how to deduce this on our own using standard reduction potentials or standard electro electrode potentials. But for the time being, this is the galvanic cell we're looking at, and we know that electrons are going to flow from left to right this way. All right, so first let's write the cell notation. Well, we have chromium metal. This is where the electrons are coming from. This is the reduced component of the anode. That's in a solid phase by itself. And so we're going to use a single vertical line for the next phase, which is the aqueous CrCl3 with a concentration of one mole per liter. And this is our anode side. I'm going to drop down to the next line for the cathode side just to save myself a little bit of space. On the cathode side, we first ask ourselves, where are those electrons going? Well, they're going into the copper two ions. And so we list that aqueous copper two chloride solution first, and its concentration is one mole per liter. By the way, when the concentration is one mole per liter, you'll sometimes see this concentration omitted since this is a standard that we're going to use later. And then finally, what is that copper two converted to by the incoming electrons? Well, the reduced form copper solid. So this is our cell notation. In thinking about the half reactions, we've actually done some thinking about this already. The oxidation half reaction is going to occur in an anode and is going to involve chromium solid going to chromium three plus. How did I know that chromium three plus is involved here? because of the chromium-3 chloride that is in the galvanic cell on that side. And how many electrons are given off? Well, three. That ensures charge balance, right? Got neutral on the left, need neutral on the right. And this is my oxidation process, as we've been color coding it in blue. What about the reduction side? Well, on the reduction side, I'm going to have copper-2 plus in aqueous solution. How did I know that this copper has a charge of two plus? Because of the copper two chloride here. Copper two chloride in the cell notation right there. And this is picking up two electrons to form neutral copper solid. And there we go. This is our reduction half reaction. Now to write the overall spontaneous redox reaction occurring in this galvanic cell, we need to draw on our understanding of balancing redox reactions. We're at the stage where we've got the half reactions balanced on atoms and charge, 
but we need to ensure the number of electrons lost in the oxidation is equal to the number of electrons gained in the reduction. And to do that, we need to scale the half reaction. Specifically, I need to multiply the oxidation by two to ensure that six electrons are lost. And I need to multiply the reduction by three to again ensure that six electrons are gained. Once I do that, we can get to the balanced chemical equation overall. And so to show that, I'm gonna copy these guys down here and rearrange things a little bit. So chromium solid, in fact, two moles, if you like, of chromium solid are reacting with three moles of copper two plus here. And the products, as you might imagine, we can once again take advantage of copy and paste. I'm actually going to copy the reactant side now. Since we'll still have chromium and copper atoms around, but now on the product side, I end up with three copper metal solids, three Cu solids. Let me move these out a little bit. So copper two has been reduced to copper metal, and I end up with two, two chromium three plus cations. And as always, it's worth doing a sanity check here to make sure that everything is balanced. I've got two chromiums on the left, two chromiums on the right, three coppers on the left, and three coppers on the right. And what about charge? Well, I've got plus six on the left-hand side, three copper two pluses, and plus six on the right-hand side with two chromium three pluses. And that positive six charge in the physical galvanic cell is balanced by all these chlorides, which are essentially just spectator ions that may move around as the cell discharges, but otherwise don't take part in any electron transfer at all.